This is the Mini Axe. You've probably been told that it is the best axe in the game, but the funny thing about that is it kind of isn't in a lot of situations. We'll get into why in a second, but without wasting any time, let's get straight into this video. Yo, what is happening? My name is Apton and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you every axe you need to have on you in Lumber Tycoon 2. This is basically a list of all of the best axes, so if you're looking to make your life a whole lot faster and easier, definitely get some of these axes to have on your base so that you can pick them up whenever you need. There's different axes you could consider the best for different situations, so if you can afford it, at least eventually I would recommend having every axe we go over. This will honestly make things go so much faster, so even if you can't get all of the axes right now, I know it can help to at least have a full list, and guys, if you don't know where to get these axes, don't worry, we'll go over all of that after we go over the axes as well. So with that said, let's go over the first axe, which happens to be the mini axe. I did rip on it a little bit earlier, but in all seriousness, if you do want to have only one axe on you, this is the one I would go for. It has a damage of 10.2 and a pretty good range of 16 units, making it a great axe to have. Those are some almost unbeatable stats, but we'll get into why they are actually beatable in a little bit. The Mini Axe is pretty much the best axe to have for general use if you're looking for a good multi-purpose axe. I actually use this axe the most out of all of the axes. That being said, there is a lot of axes that are much better depending on what wood you are trying to chop. And it actually cannot cut every tree in the game, making the next axe actually the best in another way. So the next axe is the End Times Axe. Its box looks like this by the way, so if you're trying to buy it, you can just either buy the axe in its unboxed form or the boxed form and just open it. This is actually the only axe on the list that you can actually get without buying from other players, but you have to wait until Halloween to do it. You basically just do the Rookery Axe quest during Halloween. But if you aren't watching this video close to Halloween, I would just recommend buying it off of some other player. Alright, so if you didn't know, Phantom Wood, which you need an eye to get, can only be cut using the End Times Axe. That makes the End Times Axe the only axe that can cut every tree in the game. So while it might not be technically as fast as the Mini Axe, it won't run into any issues cutting every wood. That being said, I personally don't use Phantom Wood very often for building, but when I do, it is very useful to have an End Times Axe on my base. And there's a lot of people that build with Phantom Wood, a whole lot more than me so this is just something that you have to decide for yourself do you use phantom wood very often and if so it is very worth having an end times axe for me personally i just have a mini axe in my inventory and then an end times axe lying on my base so that i can use it whenever Alright, next up we have the Frost Axe. This one was added pretty recently and it's actually the reason I'm making this video. It has some pretty great specs, particularly on frost wood. So on all other woods, it's actually pretty bad, but on this particular tree, it's actually the best axe you can have. And if you want to grind for money by getting wood, using this axe in combination with selling frostwood is actually one of the best ways to get money in this game. You'll save a ton of time if you just pick up this axe off of your base when you go to get icewood because the time chopping really adds up. Sometimes it's more of a hassle to drive back to your base to get the best axe for the job, but a lot of the times it really kind of isn't considering the time you'll save. In general, you want the fastest axe for the job because it just makes things go so, so much faster. So yeah, the Frost Axe is definitely an axe you'll want to have. These can be bought off of other players along with every other axe on the list, and as I said, I'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, this axe is significantly faster than the many axe on Frostwood. If you can get this one, you won't regret it, and I'd recommend just using the many axe on most woods, but just have the Frost Axe on your base until you're going to get Frostwood, because if you do need to get Icewood, it will make things go a lot faster. 
Since Frostwood is so good for getting money, this is definitely one that I would recommend having, more so than the other ones on the list. Ideally, you'd want to get all of the axes on the list, but sometimes you don't have the money to do that, so in that case, you might have to pick and choose, and if money is something you are struggling with, once again, the Frost Axe is great for that. I'll leave a link in the description, by the way, to Electro's video on the best way to harvest Frostwood in 2023. Alright, next up we have the Fire Axe. The Fire Axe is great at cutting lava wood. If you get lava wood often, I would actually say that this is a pretty essential axe to have because lava wood is pretty slow to cut with a mini axe. Do note that if you get lava wood, you have to go up the volcano and the lava in the volcano can kill you and destroy all of your axes. So be careful, I would recommend only bringing up the Fire Axe if you ever decide you're going to get lava wood so that you don't lose any of your other axes. Alright, next up we have the Gingerbread Axe. This is actually my favorite axe because its specialty is some of my favorite woods to build with. So this axe cuts koa and walnut wood super fast. It is a little faster th at cutting koa than walnut. Its damage for koa is actually a little bit higher than the mini axe, and if you combine that with the massive speed increase, you can start to see why I think this is such an OP axe. But guys, that's not even the most OP part about this axe. This axe actually has the best range out of any of the axes, which is kind of funny because it is the shortest axe in the game, but this is actually so significant, guys. Look at how far away I am and I'm still able to chop things. That is actually just insane. I can actually see this axe being useful in more cases than just Onkoa and Walnut. Anytime that the mini axe just can't reach something, this will come in handy. It's also pretty significant that it has a specialty for two different woods. Most specialty axes just have one specialty wood, but this one has two. So yeah, all of these factors combined with the fact that these are two of my favorite woods to build with, I honestly carry a gingerbread axe on me pretty much all of the time. Just behind the many axe, honestly, in my opinion, this is one of the best axes you can have on you at any given time. It is honestly so useful. If you don't have one, get one. It is honestly going to make your life so much easier. Walnut and Koa are some of the best looking woods that you can build with. So yeah, definitely a good idea to get one of these. Even if you don't build very often, it's still a very good axe. By the way, on woods other than koa and walnut, the gingerbread axe is just slightly worse than the end times axe, so it's definitely not going to replace your many axe, but I can definitely see certain situations where it could potentially do that. Anyways, the next axe is the cave axe. This one is great for blue wood, aka cave crawler. I know a lot of people love blue wood, so this will be great for you if you do. Personally, it's not my favorite because it is just so neon. It's hard to make it look good in building. But as with all of the other axes, if you're going to go ahead and get the specialty wood, you might as well have it on your base so that you can just go ahead and grab it when you need it. If you're curious, by the way, to get blue wood, it's a little bit difficult. I'd say it's the second hardest to get besides palm wood in the game currently. The blue wood route changes every few days, so it's just best to follow a tutorial. I would recommend Game Logics. Just go to his channel and click on the latest blue wood guide, and it will show you exactly how to navigate through the maze to get blue wood on that day. So, yeah, guys, if you like blue wood and you use it a lot and you go ahead and harvest it a lot, I would definitely recommend having it. Otherwise, I would worry about all the other axes first. Alright, the final axe is the Overgrown Axe. This one has vines growing on it. Its specialty is Goldwood and Zombiewood, which are the two tree variants that currently grow in the swamp. As always, it is much faster at cutting the woods it specializes in. Goldwood is especially hard, and thus the mini axe is actually very slow on this wood, so the overgrown axe is very useful for that. Zombie wood is a lot faster, but 
Again, if you have the overgrown axe, it's definitely faster to just bring that to the swamp if you want to harvest these trees. This one, like the gingerbread axe, kills two birds with one stone in that it has two specialty woods. So I would strongly recommend having this one on your base, especially if you build with these woods often. Goldwood is also pretty good for making money, so yeah, I would definitely go for this one. And yeah, that'll pretty much do it for all of the axes. If I didn't have a lot of money and I had to choose which ones I would want to get, I would personally go in this order. I would go for the many axe first just so that I can chop all of the trees decently fast. Then I'd go for a frost axe so that I can get more money getting frost wood so that I can get the other axes. Then I'd go for the gingerbread axe, then the overgrown axe, followed by the fire axe, then the end times axe, and finally the cave axe. So yeah, that's pretty much the order that I would buy the axes in. Obviously, that'll change for you depending on your own playing style and whether or not you already have any of the axes. But yeah, that's pretty much my ranking of the best to the worst in terms of the best axes you can have. Now, how the heck do you get all of these axes? Well, as mentioned earlier, we are going to have to buy them off of other players unless it's the end times axe, in which case you can get it on Halloween. So I would recommend going to a discord server that has a trading channel and that will vastly improve your chances of making a deal with another player now what discord servers do that well currently there is a lot but you'll have better chances of striking a deal in more active servers my discord server actually has one of the most active trading chats of all of the lumber tycoon 2 discord servers so I'm gonna go over my discord server because I am the most familiar with it but I'll also leave links in the description to other Discord servers in case you can't strike a deal in my server. Anyways, at the moment, my Discord server is completely open to trades. So all you have to do is join my Discord server, link in the description or on the end card at the end of the video. And you just want to look for people trading the item you are looking for. On screen, I have every axe in all forms that we went over in this video. So just look for any pictures, take some time to read some posts, and see if you find one. If you do, click on it and make an offer. If you don't find any, then you can make your own post, just briefly explain what you want and how much you're willing to pay, and then you can take a screenshot from this video of what axe you are looking for, and then you can just upload it to your post so that your post has an image on it that will just make it easier for people to find. And then all you have to do is include a tag, probably an axe if you're looking for an axe, and then just post it. Then you can just wait for someone to respond. Once they do, we have VIP servers open for you to join and meet up to make your trade. So then just say which VIP you want to meet up in, like a VIP 1 or VIP 2. Then just go to the VIP servers channel and click on the VIP you want to go to, and you can meet up with the person you're trading with. And then of course you want to record the trade so that if they scam you, which is pretty unlikely, but if they do, we can ban them from the Discord server so that they won't be able to scam anyone else in the server. But yeah, that'll pretty much make trading a lot less of a headache. It's much easier to trade this way than just joining Lumber Tycoon and hoping someone has what you need. So yeah, hope this helps. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. Maybe consider subscribing if it did help, maybe. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video once it's out. See ya!